that, let's go ahead and get started. Please come to sit comfortably. We'll be here for just a few minutes. You can let your shoulders relax away from your ears, down the back, the crown of the head lifting, and your eyes closing. Just take a deep breath in and out, feeling yourself settle in, arriving here for this class and this moment, this body, this practice. Aware of the inhale, aware of the exhale. Noticing if your breath feels like it's effortful, like it's hard to take a breath, or if it feels easier. If it feels deep or shallow. And notice how your body is feeling as well. There may be some tension or tightness or soreness. There also might be spaces that feel open and relaxed already too. Just accepting that all of it is there, whatever it is, however much of it there is. And lastly, aware of how your mind is doing in this moment. It feels like it's wandering or distracted or has a certain attitude about this moment right now, whatever that might be, it's welcome. And if your mind, body, breath, energy, if it needs anything from this practice, just opening yourself up to receiving whatever that might be. And so taking a deeper, fuller breath, Go ahead and bring your palms together, bowing the chin again, honoring yourself as you are in this moment, body, breath, energy, and mind. And it's in service of all of that that we will practice tonight. Go ahead and bring the palms together. And taking the heated palms over the eyes, gently brushing over the top of the head and down your neck, welcoming yourself back to the space around you. And I think today we're going to start off on our backs. So go ahead and move any props you might, you're using off to the side and please come to lay down. And take your time with that transition. Once you are on your back, just hug your knees into your chest for a moment. And it just might feel good actually to rock gently from side to side on the spine, just massaging those muscles along the spinal column into the floor. And as you do so, feeling the breath here, the breath helping us stay connected to our bodies. And all right. So bringing the knees to stillness, go ahead and take the arms out to the side, making a T shape with your body. And if there's anything in the way, you can always do cactus arms, just bending the elbows. Good. Now keep the knees drawn in close to the body. Take a deep breath in. Keep the shoulders grounding. With your exhale, drop your knees to your right side. Don't let the knees touch the floor. And then inhale, come back to center. And exhale, drop the knees to the left side. Again, don't let the knees touch the floor. And then inhale back to center. This is helping to warm up the core, low back. Exhale to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale to center and let's keep going. And if you'd like to, you can turn your chin away from the knees. So if the knees fall to the left, the chin falls to the right. Again, trying to keep the shoulders grounded here. Just a few more times. To the right. 
to the left. And as your knees come back to center for the, from the left side this time, go ahead and hug them in again. And then holding on to the right knee, go ahead and extend your left leg down to the floor and flex both feet, pulling the toes back, feeling this gentle stretch in the hip here. And after a breath or two, go ahead and hold behind your right thigh with both hands. And with your inhale, extend the right leg toward the ceiling, pull the toes back, and then exhale, bend the knee, bringing it back into your chest. Inhale, extend, feeling the back of the leg lengthen, pulling the toes back, exhale, bend the knee, bring it back in. Just a few more times. Inhale, extend, exhale, bend. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, and exhale, good. Go ahead and hold on to the top of your knee for now with your right hand. Your left hand is gonna place right on top of your left hip bone. I'll just take the leg down so you can see. It's gonna go right on top of the left hip bone, not pressing down, just reminding that hip to stay on the ground here. And then go ahead and draw your right knee out to the right. Again, ground the left hip bone. You'll feel it kind of start to pop up a bit. And holding uh, the side of the leg, inhale, extend the leg out to the right. And exhale, bend the knee. Keep the leg out. Good. Inhale, extend the leg out. Exhale, bend the knee, keeping the knee out to the side. A couple more times. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend. And then inhale, extend the leg out to the side, reach through the heel, pull the toes back, ground your left hip, and we're gonna stay for about four breaths. So you're almost halfway there. Good, deep breath in. And then exhale, bend the right knee, bring it back to center. Now, before we switch sides, I'm gonna have you take your right knee into your left hand and then draw the knee across the body, coming into a twist. Your right arm falls out behind you and your chin turns to the right here. And we'll stay for about three to four breaths. Good, inhale, please unwind and relax the right leg down. Now we're gonna do all that again, but on the other side. So just by starting, bring the left knee into your chest and we'll stay here for just a couple of breaths. Flex both feet, pull the toes back. Good, and then holding behind the left thigh with both hands. Inhale, extend the leg toward the ceiling, pull the toes back, reach through the heel, and then exhale, bend the knee back into your chest. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend, and do that about three more times. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. And then exhale, bring it in. Place your right hand onto your right hip. Holding onto the side or underneath the left leg, draw the left leg out to the left. Keep the right hip grounded. Inhale, extend the leg out to the left. Exhale, bend the knee, keeping the knee out to the side. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend a couple more times. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. Good, extend the leg this time. We're gonna stay for about four breaths. Really root your right hip bone to the floor. Feel the right core engaged to make that happen. It's okay if you're shaking a little bit here. You're halfway done. All right, take a deep breath in. Exhale, bend the left knee, bring it back to center. Switch hands, holding on to the left knee with the right hand. Draw the left knee across the body toward the floor on your right side. Left arm hangs out behind you. Your chin turns to the left. 
about three to four breaths. Good, inhale carefully, unwind the center. And just for a moment, extend the leg down just so the body can feel a sense of rest, I guess, as, as you felt both sides now. Good, and then go ahead and bring the feet flat to the floor, bending the knees and move, in, move into a uh, bridge pose practice. So starting with the arms, we'll add the hips in just a moment. With your next inhale, lift your arms toward the ceiling, then all the way overhead. Then exhale, reach back up toward the ceiling and bring the arms down to your sides. Good, inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, release the arms down. Inhale, lifting. Exhale, lowering. Let's add the hips now. With your inhale, lift the arms, lift the hips, press the pelvis toward the ceiling. Exhale, release down. Keep going, inhale, lift everything. Exhale, lower. Inhale. Exhale. A few more times, bridge, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. We're gonna hold this time. Inhale, pick up the hips, arms resting overhead. Staying in the pose, press the pelvis toward the ceiling. Feel your uh, chest or um, collarbone reach toward your chin, deepening the back bend in your upper back and breathe. Three more breaths here, press up. Deep breath in. And exhale, release the arms and the hips back down to the floor. Good. And we're gonna do our hip stretch and bridge pose next. So go ahead and Bring your right ankle to the center of your left thigh, center of the left thigh, right ankle. Flex the foot, pull the toes back. This is going to protect the ankle and the knee joint. Pretty important here. Good, your arms can stay down this time. Pressing the left foot into the floor, go ahead and pick up the hips, reach the pelvis toward the ceiling, and then exhale, slowly lower back down. Good. Again, inhale, lifting up. It's okay if this is not your highest bridge, Exhale, release down. Inhale, pressing up. Exhale, release. Just a few more times. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. We're going to hold for a few breaths. Go ahead and press up and stay pressing up powerfully through the left side. The right side can relax a bit more. Squeezing the left glute, relaxing the right glute. <laughs> Press up a bit higher. Deep breath in. And then carefully release. Down, keep the leg crossed where it's at. Just relax for a moment. So the right ankle is center of the left thigh. Go ahead and pick up the left foot and bring the left knee in toward your chest. Your right hand can snake between the legs and with both hands hold behind the left thigh. Now it's tempting here to wanna to yank the leg into your body. Don't do that. <laughs> Just pull it into the point where you feel the stretch in the right hip and stop at that point and breathe at that point, all right? Reminding you to keep the right foot flexed here. And just like when we're in bridge pose, or this last version of bridge, but uh, half bridge, 
relax your right glute. I know it's kind of screaming at you right now. Just see if you can soften the gripping or the tensing of the muscles there. Just a few more breaths. We don't like to rush the hips. Deep breath in and out. Inhale. And then exhale, release the left foot back to the floor and carefully uncross. You might want to extend the right leg to the floor for a moment just to feel that side of the body returned <laughs> to whatever state it needs to return to. And then we'll see what that feels like on the other side. So bending the right knee, bring the foot flat to the floor like you would for bridge pose, and then flexing the left foot and bending the left knee, bring the left angle to the center of the right thigh. Good. Again, we're starting with the butter, or the, the sorry, not butterfly, but half bridge, <laughs> the hip stretch bridge. So right foot flat on the floor, arms by your sides. Inhale, pick up the hips, reach the pelvis toward the ceiling, and exhale, slowly lower back down. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, lower. And just keep going. Inhale, lift. Again, it's OK if it's not your highest bridge. Exhale, lower. Just a few more times. And as you come in this time, let's stay. Activating powerfully through the right glute, let the left glute relax. Breathe. Press up, inhale, and exhale carefully and release the right, or both hips, <laughs> or you're relaxing the right glute, release the hips down to the floor. Keep the ankle at the center of the right thigh, then pick up the right foot, bring the knee closer to your body, left hand can snake between the legs, holding behind the right thigh with both hands. Now again, Bring yourself to the point where you feel the stretch and then stop there. You don't have to yank it past your range of motion. Reminder to keep the left foot flexed. And just breathe with whatever you're feeling. If it's discomfort, breathe with it. If it's feeling good, breathe with it. If you're not sure, <laughs> just breathe with it. Thinking about relaxing that left glute. We'll stay for just a little bit longer and a little something to remind yourself in this pose is to relax your jaw. Sometimes when we feel discomfort in the body, especially what might feel intense, we tense up other places. And so the jaw is an easy target. So if you notice a tensing there, just relax that. Let there be some space between the rows of teeth. Deep breath in and out. And then deep breath in. And exhale, release the right foot to the floor and carefully uncross. It's OK if you want to extend that left leg to the floor for a moment. Just feel sensation. Good. Now, when you're ready, we're just gonna roll onto our abdomens for the next couple of exercises. So just roll and scooch back onto your mat. Go ahead and bring your hands to start underneath your shoulders, elbows bending and squeezing into your sides. And we'll play around with, uh, well, we'll do both cobra and locust alternating. So starting with the legs on the ground, with your next inhale, lift the head and chest. 
Again, elbows stay bent here. Exhale, release down, turn the head to a side. We're gonna lift the legs with this one. Inhale, roll the shoulders down the back. Lift the head, chest, and legs off the ground. Locust pose. And then exhale with control. Release down, turn the head to the opposite side. Good, rolling the shoulders down the back. Keep the legs on the ground this time. Lift the head and chest, cobra. And exhale, release down, turn the head. Good, locust pose, legs lift with the head and chest, inhale. Exhale, release, turn the head. Legs stay on the floor, cobra, head and chest lift, inhale. Exhale, release, turn the head. Locust pose with the legs, inhale. Exhale, release, turn the head. Again, cobra, legs stay on the floor. And release, turning the head. Locust pose with the legs, inhale. Exhale, release, turning the head. Good, one more time for each posture. Cobra, leave the legs on the floor. Exhale, release. And again, with the legs, we're gonna stay this time. So lift the head, chest, and legs. Squeeze the elbows in toward the sides. Inner thighs are lifting behind you. And it's tempting to jut the chin forward here. Don't do that. Just kind of let the neck be in line with the spine. So looking forward and down a bit. Squeezing up. Three, two, deep breath in. And one, release on down. Take an adjusting breath here. Good. And then when you're ready, staying on our bellies or our front side of the body, I'm gonna ask you to come up into Sphinx pose. So the forearms are on the ground, the hands are on the ground and your elbows are just maybe a half an inch to an inch forward of your shoulder joint, all right? Now, pressing the hands and uh, forearms into the floor, think about lifting your belly and drawing it to the space in front of you. This is helping to deepen the back bend, especially in the upper back here, shoulders setting down away from the ears, and now we look like the Sphinx. So let's breathe with that for a moment. Creating space in the front of the body. Good, now with this lift that we've created in the chest, and we're gonna come down a little bit from it, but keeping this idea of the chest lifting, I'm gonna ask you to cross your right arm in front of you. And that frees up your left hand a little bit. So before you move the left hand, bend the left knee, bring the heel in toward the seat. With your left hand, now reach back and grab the base of the toes. So not the ankle, not the foot, but the base of the toes. Once you have that connection, you'll notice that your left hip bone is popping up off the floor. So with an exhale, roll that hip bone back down and then start to guide the heel closer to your hip. You'll feel a stretch in the front of the left thigh. And if you don't, for some reason, think about lifting the left knee. Now try to keep the chest lifting here too. There's still a lot of activation in the front of the body. And there are several reasons for that. One is just, you know, it's nice to do a back bend here. The second, if you let your head drop and stuff, this starts to get really depressing really quickly. <laughs> because it's not always the uh, most comfortable thing to stretch the front of the thigh. Sometimes it even gets agitating or angry. So keep the head lifting. <sighs> keep the heart lifting. Keep that left hip grounding. We're gonna stay for just a few more breaths. Good. Now don't slingshot it. You're gonna slowly release that left foot, letting it come to the floor. Left arm comes in front of you. Now you can drop the head for a moment. And just feel sensation in that left leg, especially the thigh. Good, and now we're gonna do the other side. So left arm crossing in front of you, allowing the chest to lift. You're gonna bend your right knee, bring the right heel in toward the seat. With the uh, right hand, reach back and grab the base of the toes again. 
roll the right hip bone back down to the floor and then start to guide the right heel in toward the right hip. Again, chest is lifting, feeling that stretch in the top of the right thigh. And again, if you don't feel that so much, you can think about lifting the right knee. Deep, deep breaths here. And just like when we were stretching the hips in the last posture, or a couple postures ago, try not to clench your jaw here. Keep the right hip bone grounding, keep the chest and head lifting. Good, all right, so take your time. Don't slingshot it, Just slowly release that right foot. Cross the right arm in front of you again and bring the forehead onto the arm or arms. Just feel that right leg adjust before we go any further. All right. So from here, please lift the head, slide the hands back underneath your shoulders, curl the toes under, press the floor forward as you push up to hands and knees, and then lift the hips into downward facing dog. Believe it or not, this is the first down dog of class, so go ahead and just walk it out if you need to, bending one knee, extending the opposite leg to the floor. But do feel that length in your spine, especially after the last practice of all those back bends. It's good to bring length into the spine after belly back bending, like locust pose and cobra. That helps to prevent back spasming. Good, then inhale, float down onto hands and knees gently, release the feet and sink back into child's pose. Stay here for a breath or two. And then inhale back up to hands and knees. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now get still in down dog. The hip bones are reaching toward the ceiling behind you. The back is flattening out. It's okay if the knees are bending. With your inhale, look at your thumbs. With your exhale, look at your navel. Inhale, look at your thumbs. Exhale, look at your navel. Stretching and strengthening the neck. Again, looking forward. Then exhale, tucking the chin, look at the navel. Forward, navel. Just a few more times, keeping the body in down dog. Good. All right, with your next inhale, float down onto hands and knees and exhale, child's pose. And take an adjusting breath here. Good. Now go ahead and come back up to hands and knees, please. And step your right foot between your hands. Back knee is on the floor to start. Now there's a couple of options for this next exercise. So I'll, I'll kind of show you how it, what, it, what it is first. <laughs> We're gonna be lifting and lowering the back knee, all right? So the most intense option I'll offer you today is to have the hands on the front thigh, lifting and lowering down, which can be some effort. If you need to, you could have the hands on the floor and do it here. But sometimes the floor is too far away. In that case, you'll want to get blocks or something similar just to uh, bring the floor closer to you. All right. And if you don't have yoga blocks, it's all right. Um, I do recommend grabbing or uh, buying some if you don't. But um, if you don't have them today, it's, it's all good. All right. So kind of figure out where you want your hands to be on the floor, on blocks, or interlaced on the thigh. Curl the back toes under. 
I'm going to use blocks. Why not? I got them here. <laughs> and then lift the back knee and then bring it back down. Lift the back knee and bring it down. And something to think about as you keep going is to extend the left heel back behind you. So yes, you're lifting the knee, but you're also straightening the leg. So making sure that happens. Lift the knee and lower it down. We're sinking into the front knee pretty deeply here. Good, let's do two more. Lift and lower. Lift and lower down. Good, all right. Go ahead and bring the hands to the floor if they're not already. Sweep the right leg back, child's pose. And then let's do that other side. Come on back up. Bring the left foot between the hands. Now again, same positions for the hands here. On the floor, on blocks, or interlaced on the thigh. Good, curl the right toes under. With your inhale, lift the back knee, extending the right heel back. Exhale, bring it back down to the floor. Inhale, extend, and lift the knee. Exhale, bring it down, and just keep going. We did about nine or 10 on the first side. We'll do the same here. Lifting and lowering, keeping the front knee bending strong. In fact, my front knee really isn't moving at all here. Good, just a couple more. Last one, lift, and then go ahead and lower the knee down. Sweep the left leg back. Again, child's pose. From child's pose, please slither down onto your abdomen, hands under your shoulders, pelvis grounding. With your inhale, lift the head, chest, and the legs, locust pose. And then exhale, release down, curl the toes under, Push up to hands and knees, and then lift into downward facing dog. Good. From down dog, please walk your hands back to meet your feet, coming into the standing forward fold. And release the head and shoulders for a moment here. Knees are bending slightly. I'm just taking deep breaths into this stretch, the backs of the legs stretching, the lower back stretching. And if you really let go of the head, even the neck is tractioning here, feeling the chin drop toward your throat more. And then go ahead and bend the knees more deeply. And then roll yourself all the way up to standing, a single vertebrae at a time. Your chin is the last to lift. Good, and feel. All right, so feel free to hydrate if you need to. We made it to standing, congratulations. All right, so let's do some more work with the neck since we're, we're standing tall now, okay? <laughs> so I'm gonna turn around, but you can keep looking at me. I'm gonna have you drop your arms down. And then with your left hand, reach behind you and grab above or below the elbow. Just don't grab the joint itself. That can be kind of weird. So above or below, and then pull the right shoulder downward. Now the right shoulder is being traction down. Drop your left ear towards your left shoulder and feel the stretch on the right side of your neck. Now, if you take chair yoga, you'll know this next move. We're gonna keep the left ear toward the left shoulder, but then at a diagonal, draw the chin down toward your left collarbone. And you'll feel more of a stretch on the back and side of the right side of your neck. Breathe.
Good. Then bring the head to center and left back up. All right, releasing that arm. Good. Let's do the other side. Again, I'm turning around. You can keep facing forward. Go ahead and reach with your right hand behind your back. And again, hold above or below the elbow on your left arm. Traction the shoulder down. And drop your right ear to your right shoulder. And breathe. And if you want to do the second part at a diagonal, just draw the chin towards your right collarbone. Do what feels good. If this doesn't feel good, just go back to what we we're doing before. Good. Bring the chin back to center and lift the head up. Release the arm. Creating some space. So now I'll have you interlace your fingers behind your back. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and then lift the arms off the back. Feel the chest lift and then drop your chin towards your throat. So it's not just dropping the head, but there's a slight tucking under of the chin. You're lifting the arms off the back as much as you can. And there's that stretch the back of the neck here. Really squeeze the shoulder blades together. Good, then lift the head. Keep the arms lifting off the back. Bend your knees slightly and then fold forward, taking the arms off the back and overhead feeling your shoulder blades knit together and slip up toward your neck. Good, staying in the forward fold, go ahead and release the arms. Once you have, press palms to shins, come up halfway, inhale, chest parallel to the floor, looking at the ground, exhale, fold back down. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the sides of the strong back, lift all the way up to standing, and then release the arms down. We got a whole new neck now. <laughs> Good. So I know we just made it to standing, but I'm actually gonna have us come back down to the floor because there's quite a bit more I want us to do. And I wanna make sure that we have plenty of time to do it. We're gonna keep working with the hips and the legs. And the caveat always is only go as far as you want to in these practices today. Something that you might need prop wise for this, aside from a block, if you have one, is a blanket because we're gonna be on our knees for a bit. And sometimes that can get a little dicey. So just have that nearby if you need it. And uh, just for setup sake, step to the top of your mat and fold forward. I like transitions. And you're gonna step your right foot way back and bring the back knee to the floor. Good. All right, a few options for this one. First of all, we're gonna be pivoting on this back knee, lifting the, the back foot up. So if that's not okay for you, you can bring your folded blanket underneath the knee to create a bit more cushion. And you can make that as thick or thin as you need to. If you don't have a blanket and you still need support, you can just double your mat up and do that instead, okay? So there's lots of options for that back knee. Good, I'm gonna do it just because I have bad knees <laughs> already. Good, so feel the hips sink down and forward. You may need a block for this one, but I'm gonna have you first lift the chest and bring the hands onto the front thigh. You'll feel the stretch in the front of the right hip or thigh or both. <laughs> Good. Now from here, I'm gonna have you bring your hands down to the right and you might use the block here eventually, but you're gonna pick up the right foot and reach back with the right hand and grab the base of the toes. This is why we did all that work earlier for the quads, the front of the thigh. And then you're gonna kind of scoot yourself back over to face forward. Now you might need the block here to hold yourself up. 
and that can go on the inside of the right uh, left foot or the outside, whichever feels most ergonomic for you. But you also might just be able to bring that front or the <laughs> left elbow onto the left knee or thigh. Good, feeling the right heel draw in toward the right hip, lifting the chest. Again, if you kind of drop your head and chest down here, it starts to get depressing really quickly. So just be gentle with yourself, keep the heart light. And breathe. Try not to scream. <laughs> Woo, that thigh is tight. Breathing, we're gonna stay for just a little bit longer. Okay, it's tempting to slingshot it. It really, really is here because you wanna get, let it go. But I want you to be gentle with, it, okay? So release that right leg. And then maybe just pivot back. So just kind of straighten the front leg, pull the left toes back just to feel this thigh come to a sense of neutrality. And we can just stretch the left hamstring as well. Good. Now, when you're ready, we're going to switch sides. So go ahead and rock forward and step forward in the standing forward fold. And then when you're ready, step the left foot way back. Now, if you need knee support, bring that here and bring the knee down. Good. Starting just getting the hips in position, sinking the hips down and forward. Hands can be on top of the front knee or thigh, looking up. I should say forward, but it's kind of a, an elevation. <laughs> Good. Now let's come into the quad stretch itself. So bring the hands down to your left. Go ahead and lift the left knee, or left, sorry, left foot. <laughs> Keep the knee on the ground. Holding onto the base of the toes of the left hand. Scoot yourself to look forward again. Again, you can use a block here to help you with that lift in the chest. Or the elbow might come onto the front thigh but keep everything sinking down and forward. Keep the heart lifting. Breathe. Try not to clench your teeth. And notice what emotions actually do come up. I know I joke about it, but sometimes we do have a visceral emotional reaction to certain postures and just notice that that's there. You don't have to make meaning of it. You don't have to identify with it. You can just say, oh, when I stretch the front of my thigh, I feel agitated. <laughs> I'm gonna stay for just a little bit longer. Again, I know you want to slap that thing to the floor, but don't do it. <laughs> I want you to slowly let go of the left foot. Bring the hands down, straighten the right leg, pull the toes back. Folding over the right leg. Good, all right. So from here, go ahead and rock forward and step forward again, standing forward fold. Believe it or not, there's more we're gonna do with these hips today. <laughs> so when you're ready, please step your right foot way back and bring the back knee to the floor. Cushion for the knee is optional. And we're gonna work our way toward pigeon pose, which is a deep hip stretch, but we're nice and warmed up for it. Again, always only go as far as your body wants you to today. You don't have to force it. So with your hands on either side of the front foot, you're gonna scooch the right foot to the right side, or sorry, left foot <laughs> to the right side of your yoga mat. It's the end of the day, you know, lefts and rights just don't make sense anymore. And then you're gonna release your shin down to the floor here. Now you might need to start tucking the uh, left heel back a bit. Just don't bring it all the way toward the groin. If you bring it back this far, you're actually not stretching anything, all right? So you wanna feel the stretch. So starting off with it parallel to the front of your mat and then scooching the heel back a bit. Good. Now keep the back toes curled under here. You might see this done sometimes with the foot flat on the floor, but I find that that has people fall out of it a lot easier. This with the right foot curled under keeps the hips squaring forward. 
Now, stay here if you want to. If you want to take this a step further, you can pick up the back knee and take it back a bit further. Just scooch it back a bit more, feeling the hips sink down. Now, you also might be tempted here to come down onto your forearms. At this point in the pose, it's probably to come out of the stretch. So I'm gonna ask you to stay up on your hands for now. Feel the heart lift and just breathe, you know, just <laughs> hang out. <laughs> Whatever you're feeling, wherever you're feeling it, whether it's in the right quad or the left hip or somewhere else. You're doing great. Again, keep the heart lifting. If you start to drop down, you'll see it starts to get depressing. Keep it light, keep it lifting, even when it's hard. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and switch sides. And to help that along, you're gonna, with the back toes curled under, go ahead and pick up the back knee and bring it forward. You're gonna slide the left foot back coming on to hands and knees. Now what you do from here is up to you. Some people like downward facing dog. Some people like child's pose. You pick. What do you wanna to do to adjust before we do the second side? And yes, we do have to do the second side. <laughs> All right, now once you've adjusted, go ahead and come back down onto hands and knees. If you need knee support, slide it under your left knee and step your right foot forward. Good. All right, so front leg. You're going to slide your right foot to the left side of your yoga mat and release the shin down parallel-ish to the front of your mat, okay? Curl the back toes under, I forgot to tell you to do that. Curl the back toes under. Now you might need to slide the right heel back a little bit, just don't bring it too far back. If you wanna take it further than this, pick up the back knee and take the back knee back further. Just keep scooching it back, the hip sinking closer to the ground. All right, feel the heart light. Breathe here. Aware of the inhale, aware of your exhale. And just notice, I know there's a lot going on in this pose. One, because there's a lot going on for me and I assume that's true for you, but also I just know that that's typically the case. And just breathe with it. Get curious about it. I tend to notice that when I'm stretching my hips like this, that the feeling of intensity, if we want to call it that, comes in waves. And so it'll be kind of intense for a moment, then it'll back off a little bit, then it'll come back and it'll back off a little bit. That's curious. <laughs> Keep the heart and head lifting. <sighs> All right, so. As much as I like to hang out here longer, time, time grows thin. So when you are ready, pick up the back knee and bring it forward as much as you can. Slide the right leg back and adjust. Again, down dog, child's pose or something else. Take your time for a moment and just take care of yourself. We will be doing a little bit more counter posing. Now, when you feel adjusted, I'm gonna ask you to come on to your back again. So take your time with that transition. Now 
And again, doing just a few more postures to help counterpose the work we've done. So with your feet stacking underneath your heels, prepping for bridge pose, we are going to do bridge pose. Arms stay down by your side. With your next inhale, lift the hips, press the pelvis toward the ceiling and stay and feel. Pressing through all four corners of the feet, hips pressing toward the ceiling, deepening the back bend in your upper back, your chest coming closer to your chin, relax your throat, relax your jaw and breathe. And press up a bit higher. Deep breath in. And exhale, release the hips on down. Good, now step your feet away from your body about six more inches and take your feet as wide apart as your yoga mat. Your arms can relax out to the sides. With an inhale, drop your knees to the right. Exhale, ground your back and bring your knees back to center, keeping the feet mat width apart. Exhale, or inhale, knees to the left. Exhale, back to center. Inhale to the right. Exhale, back to center. Inhale to the left and just keep going. Inhaling to a side. Exhaling to center. And if you wanna do more work for your neck here, you can just turn the head away from the knees. Just moving the head from side to side. And feel the legs loose in the hip socket. It's helping to alleviate any residual tension. Inhaling to a side, exhaling to center. Just a few more times. And the next time the knees come back to center from the left, pause and hug them in. Bring them into the chest. And just hold the knees still here. Sometimes you rock from side to side, but just hold them still. And if anything, think about curling your tailbone back down to the floor if you feel your lower back lifting off the ground. And when you feel complete in this pose, please extend your legs down to the floor, have the heels about mat width apart, toes flopping out to the sides, arms are by your sides, palms face up. Taking a deep breath in and out, just feel yourself sink into the floor here. Relax the jaw, relax the face. Soften your abdomen. And as you settle into this resting posture, I'll ask you to see if you can relax the effort of your breath. And notice if there's any effort pulling the breath in or pushing it out and just try to relax those tendencies. The breath coming into its more autonomic state.
peace. 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 Please remember your breath and take a deeper, fuller breath. Feel some gentle movements in the hands and feet, those arms and legs. Knowing that if you need to come back to this restful state that you always can. Take your time as you roll to your right side, slowly transitioning up to a comfortable seat. And once you're in a seat, bring your palms together, lower the chin. And honoring yourself for the work that you have done here in this class tonight. Gratitude to yourself for the effort you put forth and the outcomes you'll receive. And may that effort and this practice continue to serve you. So until we meet again, Namaste.